little Holy Saturday reflection. Holy Saturday, such an interesting almost non-day. But we do ourselves a disservice if we skip too quickly from the tragedy of Good Friday and move on to the ecstatic joy of Easter. Holy Saturday, silent, empty. No waiting expectantly on that first weekend over 2,000 years ago because no one knew about Easter Day. Perhaps this day is a mirroring of those times in our lives when we are at our very lowest. And this reflection that Jesus will seek us out in our rock-bottom state and transfigure us by his divine life. In many ways, Holy Saturday can feel like a kind of no man's land, uh, suspended somewhere between questions and answers, between death and new life. And in case we feel that this is a rare occurrence, may I point out that this kind of hovering between is more often where we usually are, rather than the intensity of the Good Friday type experience or even new life experience of Easter. Some theologians feel that Holy Saturday resonates with a more apophatic theology, that is a, a negative theology, an attempt to describe God's nature by what God is not. It's a making space for and, and an owning of the truth that ultimately God confounds human understanding. And yet, this is in no way detracts from the felt experience of encountering divine presence. It holds mystery and presence together. R.S. Thomas, a priest in Wales for most of his life in the 20th century and one of the finest Christian poets, writes in much of his poetry about this inversion, this not knowing of God. Here's one of his poems which engages this form of Holy Saturday mysticism so well. I never thought other than that God is that great absence in our lives, the empty silence within, the place where we go seeking, not in hope to arrive or find. He keeps the interstices in our knowledge, the darkness between stars. His are the echoes we follow, the footsteps he has just left. So how, how do we engage this silence of God, this absence in divine presence? Well, just three brief ways. One, remember God's word, even if scripture seems lifeless and dry. It does unfailingly nourish something deep within us, even if we don't feel it. Secondly, look around and be willing to encounter God in other people, places and experiences. Thirdly, become a conduit of God's presence for others around you. You see, because we are created in God's image, when we are present in any situation, no matter how terrible, God cannot be absent. We're so blessed to live now because it gives us the hindsight of knowing that Holy Saturday is not the end of the world. It is but the space between two worlds. I'd like to conclude with a quote from a book called Between Cross and Resurrection. It's written by Alan E. Lewis. Because God lives present in absence, praying and responding in silence, the Easter story which leaves us mute is also our empowerment for utter utterance and prayer. Amen. <laughs>